Welcome to A Level and EP Physics. In today's lesson, we will discuss past paper questions from May June 2023 paper. As always, we do. We will discuss these questions in detail so you can improve your conceptual understanding of physics and also you can have better understanding of these exam questions. Let's study together. Let's improve together. Question one says: In an electron gun, electrons are released from a heated filament. Which of the following is the name of this process? So in this case, electrons are released from a heated filament. So simply we can write down this is emission of electrons. We can simply write down this is emission of electrons due to heating. Electrons due to heating. And this process we call is thermionic emission. Thermionic emission. So this is thermionic emission thermionic emission so then so far this question has to be t thermionic emission photoelectric effect this is emission of electrons so we can try to understand a little bit more about these processes as well emission of electrons due to light photo means light so simply we can say due to light so that process is called photoelectric effect thermionic so you can see here thermal thermal means thermal energy heating so we can say thermal energy so like this you need to understand physics ionization ionization is the formation of or simply we can say process by which ions are formed or we can say forming of ions by losing or gaining electrons so this is a journal term by losing are gaining electrons we can call that is ionization so ionization means the process by which ions are formed that process is called ionization how ions are formed they lose electron or they gain electrons and annihilation annihilation is when matter matter change into energy matter change into energy it means if we have electron and we have positron so particle and antiparticle when they combine they form gamma radiations means matter in this case will be converted into energy that process we call is annihilation Question 2 says there is a potential difference of 6 volts across a 220 microfarads capacitor. Which of the following expression gives the charge stored on the capacitor? Charge stored on a capacitor Q is equal to C times V. C is the capacitance of the capacitor that is given to us 220 microfarads. So we can convert into farads and potential difference is 6.0 volts if a little bit simplify this one we can also write on 2.20 times 10 to minus 4 farads and here we have 6.0 volts so the answer for this question has to be b question theory says a nucleus of potassium 38 emits a beta plus particle which row of the table shows the proton number and nuclear number of the nucleus that is produced? So first of all, we need to understand it is given to us this is beta plus particle. So it simply means that this is beta plus decay. So we can write on here potassium 19 and mass number of this one is 38. This decays into a nucleus and it also emits beta plus particle mean positron and it will also emit electron neutrino to conserve lepton number this has to be electron neutrino this is antiparticle so this has to be neutrino now from here simply we need to understand mass number on both sides have to be the same so here we can say and mass number of this one is zero plus zero it means mass number of this nucleus has to be 38 and charge on both sides also has to be the same so here we can write down and charge on this one is plus one neutrino has no charge so the charge on this unknown nucleus has to be 18 so this one is 18 we need to find out proton number so proton number is equal to a atomic number so the proton number is 
18. Nuclear number has to be 38. Nuclear number means the mass number. So you also need to understand nuclear number means mass number. The number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus. Number of protons plus neutrons. Mass number. So the answer for this question has to be 18. Proton number and nuclear number is 38. So the answer for this question is B. Question 4 says which of the following gives the base units of impulse? So first of all we need to understand impulse. What is impulse? Impulse is simply change in momentum and change in momentum is m times delta v. So the base unit of mass is kg and base unit of change in velocity is meters per second. So the answer for this one has to be a kgs meters per second. Impulse and momentum they have the same unit. So very important one you need to understand these two quantities they have the same unit. They have same unit. Question 5 says scientists use particles with high energy to investigate the structure of nucleons. Which of the following statement is not a reason why particles with high energy are required? So in this case we are investigating the structure of nucleons. Structure of nucleons. Investigating. Very important one. To allow forces between particles to be overcome? Yes. To overcome repulsive forces, particle must have enough energy to ensure particles have a very high momentum yes they should have high momentum to ensure particles have a very small deep wavelength to study the structure because the atomic spacing is very small so we can say as atomic spacing is very small then for diffraction to take place wavelength also has to be very small so this option is also correct to provide sufficient energy for the production of new particles we are investigating the structure our purpose here is not to form new particles so this option is incorrect so the answer for this question is d question 6 says which of the following is a fundamental particle fundamental particle is a particle which cannot be further sub divided so if you get given options neutrino is a fundamental particle means it does not consist of any smaller particles so this is fundamental particle neutron is not a fundamental particle this is a hadron or we can say this is a baryon it consists of one up quark and two down quarks so this is not fundamental particle pion is a meson it consists of one quark one antiquark so this is also not fundamental particle proton it consists of two up quarks then one down quark and it is a baryon so it is also not fundamental particle so the answer for this question has to be a question 7 says a particle has mass 6.5 mega electron volts per c square which of the following gives the mass in kgs of the particle so this mass is given in form of energy we need to express this one in form of kgs in order to answer this question simply we need to understand e is equal to mc square so from here we can say m is equal to e over c square if e is in joules and c is in meter per second then the mass we will get this one will be in kgs so mass will be in kgs then kgs now simply we can write on here m so how we can convert this one into joules we need to understand one electron volt or we can say one mega electron volt one mega electron volt this is equal to 1.6 times 10 to minus 13 joules minus 13 joules so we have 6.5 mega electron volts so we can write down 6.5 times 1.6 times 10 to minus 13 joules divided by we have value of c 3 times 10 to 8 square now if we simplify so here we will have meter per second square as well the unit 
Now, if we simplify, we will get the value of m. Now, if you look at given options, if you look at option A, it is given to us 6.5 times 1.6 times 10 to minus 19. This is wrong because this is mega electron volt. If it was electron volt, this one will be correct. So, A is not correct. 6.5 times 1.6 times 10 to minus 13. Yes, this is correct. So, the answer for this question has to be B. This is incorrect. This is also incorrect. So the answer is B. So this is how you need to figure out. So you need to understand how to convert units. And this is very important one. You need to understand one mega electron volt is equal to 1.6 times 10 to minus 13 joules. You can also remember this one. One electron volt is equal to 1.6 times 10 to minus 19 joules here. Yeah. So these are some important points you need to understand. Question 8 says, in the 20th century, scientists carried out alpha particle scattering experiments. Which of the following is not a conclusion from the scientist observations during these experiments? Option A says, most of the atom is empty space. Yes, because scientists, they figure out that most of the atom is empty space. Because most of alpha particles, they just went straight through. It shows that most of the atom is empty space and very few alpha particle they bounce back. It shows that mass is concentrated in a very small size in very small space or we can say in nucleus and charge is also concentrated in very small space. So option A is correct. The nucleus contains most of the mass of the atom. Yes. This is also true. The nucleus is made of protons and neutrons. Neutrons were discovered later after this experiment. So it means this option is incorrect. There is a concentration of charge in the atom. Yes, most of the charge is concentrated in the nucleus. This was one of the conclusion from this experiment. So the answer for this question is C because this is incorrect statement so the answer is c actually neutron were discovered in 1932 around this time question 9 says which of the following shows the beta minus decay of a nucleon for beta minus decay you need to understand neutron decays into proton so this is the important point you need to understand neutron decays into proton so here we have beta minus particle and beta minus particle is electron so this is a particle so there must be electron anti neutrino to conserve lepton number so this is what you need to understand about beta minus decay if this is clear to you now if you look at given options neutron decays into proton but this one this is electron neutrino so lepton number is not conserved because this has lepton number one this also has lepton number one but neutron is hadron it has zero lepton number so lepton number is not conserved so this option is not possible if you look at option p neutron decays into proton we have beta minus particle means electron and we have electron neutrino so the answer for this question is if you look at C and D, proton decays into neutron. This is beta plus decay. So this is incorrect. This is also incorrect. So the answer is B. Question 10 says, the diagram shows a current carrying wire between two magnetic poles. The magnetic flux density between the poles is 0.85 teslas. Which of the following gives the force on the wire in Newton? So we need to calculate force on this wire and force on current carrying wire is equal to I times L times B. So this L is very special one. This is length of the wire perpendicular to the field. So this is very important point. Length of wire perpendicular to the field. So we can say length of wire perpendicular to the field. So we can say perpendicular to the field so this is the main point you need to understand perpendicular to the field so in this case force we can write down now value of current is given that is 0.17 amps and value of l we have to consider which value of l we have to take 
So first of all, we can draw our magnetic field lines between these two poles. So we can draw a few lines to show this is direction of magnetic field. So this is our magnetic field. Now if you look at component of this wire, this wire has two components. One is this one and one is along direction of magnetic field lines. So we have to take this component and the length of this component is 5.2. So we can say this is 5.2 centimeters. So we have 5.2 centimeters means 10 to minus 2 and value of B is given to us that is 0.85. So we can write on here this is 0.17 and here we have 0.85. Teslas. So this is the magnitude of the force. We can also find out direction of the force. To find direction of the force, we have to use Fleming left hand rule. Means we have to use Fleming left hand rule. Fleming left hand rule. So in this case, we have magnetic field. So we can say B. B is down. So this is direction of magnetic field. And current direction is this way current direction this way and force on this wire is only due to the component which is perpendicular to the magnetic field so simply we can say so this component we have to take this one we have to take so this one so this is our current so now you have to use the left hand so magnetic field is down current is to the right so it means force is into the page so force will be into the page so this is direction of force so we can say force is into the page so force is into the page so this is direction of the force into the page this can be the answer this can be the answer but this is not answer this is not answer now if you look at given options a and b this is right answer so a is the right answer. actually this is incorrect this has to be 0 0.85 0 0.85 this one is correct this is correct this has to be 0 0.85 so this is just typo this is wrong actually so this one is correct it has to be 0.85 so we can say this is correct this is correct but this has to be open 052 only this length no sign so it means this is incorrect a is the correct answer here they have given you 0.85 but here they're using open 085 so this is just typo i hope this makes sense to you if this makes sense to you and if this video is helpful please like and subscribe because your encouragement is very important and with your encouragement a lot of more videos will be coming very soon so i will spare more time if you like and subscribe and also leave some comments in the comment section if you need more help and you are looking for extra resources join patreon see you next video Welcome to A-Level and EP Physics. In today's lesson, we will discuss past paper questions from May-June 2023 paper 2. In today's lesson, we will start from question number 11. We have already discussed question 1 to question 10 in part 1. As always we do, we will discuss these questions in detail so you can improve your conceptual understanding of physics and also you can have better understanding of these exam questions. Let's study together. Let's improve together. Question 11 says, in 2022, CERN announced the discovery of a new particle known as pentaquark, which is made of five quarks. Table shows the charges on some quarks. The five quarks in the pentaquark are charm quark, anti-charm quark, down quark, strange quark, and up quark. Some scientists said that the pentaquark is made of a meson and baryon, held together by the attraction of the equal and opposite charges. So this is very important, equal and opposite charges. Determine the quark composition and charge of a meson and of a baryon that could make up the penta quark. So first of all, what is the possible charge on meson? For meson, we need to understand meson consists of 
quark and antiquark. So this is the main concept. It consists of two particles. One has to be quark and the other particle has to be antiparticle, mean it has to be antiquark. So what can be the possible composition? So we have to take actually anti-charm quark. So this has to be must. And the second one we can take is charm quark. The charge on this one is plus two by theory. So we can take from here, we can take strange quark or we can take down quark. So the total charge on this one will be equal to minus one. So simply we can take here D. So this is our down quark. So the charge on down quark is minus one over theory E and charge on anti charm quark, this will be minus two by theory. So the total charge will be equal to minus E or simply we can say is equal to minus one. So the total charge has to be minus E. So or you can say minus one. Quark composition, we have said this is down quark and anti charm quark. You can also write down this can be strange quark and it can be anti charm quark. This is also another possible composition. For the second part, we need to write down quark combination for baryon and also we need to write down the charge on baryon. We have already said that meson is made of these two quarks. So it means baryon is made of C S. U. Now, if you look at the charge on CSU, charge on C, we have this is plus 2 by 3 and charge on the strange quark, we have this is minus 1 over 3. So, this is the charge on the strange quark and the charge on the up quark is this. So, simply we can say CSU. So, we have charge plus 2 by 3E, we have minus 1 over 3E and we have plus 2 by 3E. Now, if you look at the total charge, we will have this is 3 and we will have here 2E, we will have minus E and we will have plus 2E. So, in this case, we will get theory E by theory. So, it means the charge is plus E. So, this is the charge. So, meson has negative one charge and this has positive one charge means positive E. The charge on this one is equal to the charge on positron and the charge on meson is equal to the charge on electron. So, these two, they will attract each other. They have equal and opposite charges. So, simply quark composition, quark combination we can say this is CSU for baryon and the charge on this one is plus E. So this is how you need to answer this question. Question 12 says a particle with charge capital Q and momentum P follows a circular path of radius R. The path is at right angles to a magnetic field of magnetic flux density P. Derive the following equation for the particle. For this particle, it is given to us the particle is moving in a circle and we can imagine this is the center of the circle and radius of the circle is given to us that is equal to R. At this point, we can also say the momentum of the particle is in this direction. So momentum is equal to mv. As this particle is doing circular motion, it means that there is a resultant force on this particle, resultant force. And in this case, this resultant force is provided by magnetic force because particle is moving in a magnetic field. So simply we can say magnetic force provides centripetal force in this case, provides centripetal force. And you need to understand centripetal force is not a force by itself means it's not a force like gravity, it's not a force like electrical force, but it's just resultant force. So centripetal force is just a fancy name for resultant force when the body is moving in a circle. So we can simply say in this case magnetic force is providing the centripetal force. So we can say magnetic force BQV, V is the speed of the particle. This has to be equal to mv square divided by r. For this question, we have speed on both sides. We can cancel this speed with this. So we left with bqr, then this is equal to mv. From here, we can say r will be equal to mv divided by bq. 
and mv is equal to momentum so we can say p divided by pq so this is what we need to derive very straightforward question and this is a typical question you will see in many past papers part b says the particle is an alpha particle of energy 5.4 mega electron volts calculate b means calculate magnetic flux density mass of alpha particle is given and r is given to us in the last part we have already found that r is equal to p divided by b q now we need to find out value of b so simply we can write down p divided by r times q we already have value of r it is given in the question so we can say this is 0.096 meters be careful with units then the charge on alpha particle is 2 times e so 2 times 1.6 times 10 to minus 19 coulombs and value of momentum if we have we can calculate value of b energy is given to us so this is kinetic energy of alpha particle now somehow we need to link kinetic energy with momentum i hope you understand kinetic energy is equal to p square means momentum squared divided by 2 m if you are not very clear about this one, simply you can derive this one. Kinetic energy is equal to 1 half mv square and momentum. Momentum is equal to mv. So we can simply write on here. This is 1 half m. So we have here v square. Now if we multiply with m and divide by m, we can rearrange. We can say this is 1 half. We can say mv square divided by m. So simply we can say this is equal to p squared divided by m. So this is how you can derive. It's very important if you remember this one, kinetic energy is equal to p squared divided by 2m. Means the momentum of the particle divided by 2 times mass of the particle. So from here we can say momentum will be equal to 2 times mass of the particle times the kinetic energy of the particle and this kinetic energy is given in mega electron volts we need to convert this energy into joules so for this one we need to understand one electron volt is equal to 1.6 times 10 to minus 19 joules and one mega electron volt this will be equal to 1.6 times 10 to minus 13 joules so simply we have to multiply this given value with 1.6 times 10 to minus 13 so we can write on here now we have two times mass we have 6.64 times 10 to minus 27 multiplied by kinetic energy that is 5.4 times 1.6 times 10 to minus 13 so this is momentum and if we solve this one we will get momentum is equal to 1.07 times 10 to minus 19 newton second or you can say kgs meters per second so this is kgs meter per second so this is value of momentum now simply we can plug in this value here 1.7 1.07 times 10 to minus 19 now if we solve this one we will get b is equal to 3.48 teslas so this is our final answer so we can write down this is 3.48 teslas up to 3 sf the given data is up to 2sf and 3sf so you can use 3sf in your final answer or you can use 2sf so you can also say this is equal to 3.5 teslas this is also acceptable so this is how you need to answer quite straightforward one the main concept is this one most of the time student they struggle to link kinetic energy with momentum question 13 says linux and cyclotrons both accelerate charged particles to very high speeds the diagram shows a linux explain the use of electric fields in a linux you should refer to the frequency of the ac supply so we need to explain the use of electric field in linear accelerator and linear accelerator simply use electric field to accelerate particles so this is the main principle electric field is used to accelerate the particles so this one is the main principle accelerate 
charged particle so we can say charged particle so linear accelerator is used to accelerate charged particles how it accelerate let's try to understand this one in detail imagine that we are accelerating positively charged particles so this side has to be negative I mean this tube has to be negative so this side will be negative this side will be positive and this tube will be positive because this is connected with positive terminal this tube will be negative this tube will be positive and so on now if this charge particle reaches at this point and this plate is positive so this charge particle will decelerate because there will be repulsive force on this now we need to understand how much time we want this charged particle to spend in this tube so when it reaches at this point this tube become negative this tube become negative and for ac power supply we understand polarity of ac changes after half cycle so this is the polarity so time taken until this point this time is t by 2 so it become negative after half cycle polarity changes so if it spend time t by 2 in this tube so when it will reach this tube this will be negative then this will be positive then this will be negative and so on so if after half cycle this become negative it means again it will be attracted so again it will accelerate so the time it has to spend in each drift tube that time has to be equal to t by 2 so this is the first thing you need to understand as frequency of ac supply this frequency is constant is fixed frequency fixed frequency so it means that time spent in each tube should be the same time spent in each tube should be the same each tube has to be constant has to be constant and this has to be equal to t by 2 time period of ac so if time is fixed we understand d this is equal to v times t so if time is fixed this time is equal to t by 2 so when the speed increases this distance has to increase it means that length of tube has to increase so the length of tubes has to increase length of tubes has to increase so you can see this tube is shorter this is longer longer and longer so these are some important points you need to understand about linear accelerator if these points make sense to you it means you have understanding of linear accelerator and now let me show you the answer how you can write down your answer in your answer you can talk about these points you can say particles are accelerated by an electric field in the gap so we have discussed this point already here the ac frequency is constant we have discussed ac frequency is constant so particles spend the same time in the tube so they spend the same time in tube each tube and time is equal to half of period of ac power supply this is achieved by increasing the length of the drift tube so we have to increase l because d is equal to v times t this quantity is fixed so when this increase this has to increase the ac polarity changes so the electric field is in the same direction when the particle is in the gaps so every time when the particle is here this has to be negative when particle is here this has to be this tube has to be negative and so on i hope this makes sense to you what is the main principle of linear accelerator particle b says the diagram shows a cyclotron explain why magnetic field is applied at right angles to the d's in the cyclotron for cyclotron we need to understand we have ac power supply and also we apply magnetic field we apply magnetic field purpose of ac is to accelerate means speed up particles so to speed up particles and this is done by electric force electric force so when particles pass through this gap the speed will increase means they will gain kinetic energy and purpose of magnetic field is to keep particle in circle keep particles in circle so we need magnetic field so magnetic field we need and magnetic force is due to magnetic field magnetic force 
and this magnetic force has to be perpendicular to direction of motion of the particles or direction of velocity of the particles so they will experience force that force will keep them in circle and magnetic force cannot increase the speed of particles because magnetic force always act perpendicular to direction of motion of particles so that's the reason magnetic field has to be perpendicular to the d's so if you look at left hand so if this is direction of motion of particle then this has to be magnetic field so angle between them is 90 degrees and angle between force and direction of motion or velocity also 90 degrees so magnetic force always act perpendicular to velocity so that's the reason particle go in a circle and only direction of particle changes but speed of particle does not change so these are the points you need to understand this question has only two marks so you can write down these two points in your answer you can simply say particles experience a force at right angles to their motion which causes centripetal acceleration and particles move in a circle particles move in a circle and particle experience magnetic force magnetic force keep particles in a circle so the magnetic force is perpendicular to velocity and magnetic field has to be perpendicular to the d's in the cyclotron Welcome to A-Level and AP Physics. In today's lesson, we will discuss past paper questions from May-June 2023 Paper 4. As always we do, we will discuss these questions in detail so you can improve your conceptual understanding of physics and also you can have better understanding of these exam questions. Let's study together, let's improve together. Question 14 says, in the 1930s, scientists investigated collision of alpha particles with protons to determine whether the collisions were elastic. The diagrams show an alpha particle before and after the collision with a stationary proton. The proton moves off at an angle theta to the original direction of the alpha particle. Before collision, alpha particle is moving and proton is at rest. And momentum of alpha particle before collision is given to us. And after collision, this is the situation. And momentum of alpha particle after collision is also given to us. Part A says show that the momentum of the proton after the collision is about 5 times 10 to minus 20 newton seconds at an angle theta where theta is about 20 degrees. This question is about momentum in two dimensions and most of the time students they struggle with this type of questions. But this type of questions are quite straightforward one. If you simply understand how to answer questions when momentum is in one dimension then you can also answer questions for momentum in two dimensions. So there is no big difference. If you're very confident how to answer questions about momentum in one dimension, you can also answer questions about momentum for two dimensions. You just need to be confident. When momentum is in two dimensions, there are little more steps. But when momentum is in one dimension, there are fewer steps. That's only difference. Method is 100% is the same now let's try to answer this question so first of all we will discuss how to approach this problem and then we will plug in numbers and we will find the right answer so first thing you need to understand for any closed system so we can say for any closed system momentum before means the total momentum of the system before collision has to be equal to total momentum of the system after Clear. So this is the first thing we need to understand. Now we can break down this momentum before into two components. We can say momentum along x-axis means along horizontal and momentum along vertical. And we can also break down this one into two dimensions, momentum along x-axis and momentum along 
y axis so we can write down this equation again so we can say momentum along x axis before collision has to be equal to momentum along x axis after collision and momentum along y axis before collision has to be equal to momentum along y axis after collision so this is how we can break down now we need to understand momentum along x axis before collision before collision we have only alpha particle that was moving along x axis then proton was at rest so simply we can say in this case momentum before collision is only momentum of alpha particle so we can write on here momentum of alpha particle before this has to be equal to momentum of alpha particle after because after alpha particle is moving along this direction it has two components so we can use arrow for that it has one component along x-axis and it has one component along y-axis and proton also has two components it has one component along x-axis and it has one component along y-axis so after clean we have momentum of alpha particle along x-axis plus we have momentum of proton for this question we need to calculate momentum of proton so we need to find out momentum of proton after it has to be equal to momentum of alpha particle before so we will be writing b here for before minus it has to be momentum of alpha particle after so we can say a after now simply we need to plug in values here we can find the x component of momentum of proton and from here initial momentum along y direction is equal to zero so from here we can say that momentum of alpha particle along y direction after plus momentum of proton along y direction it has to be sum has to be equal to zero so we can simply say it means that momentum of alpha particle alpha particle has to be equal to momentum of proton along y direction but the direction will be opposite so this means direction is opposite so if you're saying this is a vector this is a vector here will be negative sign if you're just talking about magnitude it means the magnitude will be the same so here we have this one this equation i'll be writing here's so momentum of proton after we can say momentum proton after clean is equal to momentum of alpha particle before so we can write on in detail before minus momentum of alpha particle after after clean so we can find out x component we can find out y component and then we can find out the momentum so we will go to that point later now first of all we have momentum of alpha particle before and this is the value of that so we can say this is value of that so simply we can plug in here this is 1.26 1.26 times 10 to minus 19 this is b4 and how we can find out momentum of alpha particle along x after so here we have momentum of alpha particle after and this is equal to 8.06 times 10 to minus 20 but we need x component and so this one has to be equal to 8.06 times 10 to minus 20 cosine of this angle we are talking about x component cosine of 10 point cosine of 10.2 degrees so if we solve this one we will find x component of proton so if we solve this one we will find x component of proton and if we do this calculation you will get 4.67 times 10 to minus 20 newton seconds so this is momentum of proton after so we have found this one so this is very important one we need this one later 
so we can draw rectangle around this one now y component we have discussed these two components are the same so we can say y component of proton after this is equal to y component of alpha y component of alpha after so we are talking about y component now if you want to write down you can say x component here for better understanding we can also say here y component so we are talking about y like this you need to approach y component i'm writing these things in detail so you can have better understanding of this concept so next time you will not struggle with momentum in two dimensions so how we can find the y component I mean this component b y so this is simply momentum because this is sine so we will write on here this is 8.06 times 10 to minus 20 sine of this angle this is 10.2 so we can clear this so we have 10.2 now if we solve this one we will get the value y component we will get from here y component that will be equal to 1.43 times 10 to minus 20 newton seconds so we have y component of momentum of proton and we have x component so we can calculate momentum we need to calculate this one so momentum of proton simply we can say this will be equal to p x square plus p y square means the momentum of the proton so we are talking about proton and we have to take square root of this one so x component we have that is 4.67 times 10 to minus 20 square of this plus we have 1.43 times 10 to minus 20 we have we have to square this value and if you take the square root we will get final value of momentum that will be equal to 4.88 times 10 to minus 20 newtons second and this answer is very close to this one if you write down up to 2sf 1sf you will get this value so it means this one is correct now we need to find out the angle I mean this angle we need to find out so simply we have to take the vertical component so we can say tangent of theta this will be equal to the vertical component py divided by px so theta from here will be equal to tangent inverse tangent inverse of py we have py here so this is 1.4 3 times 10 to minus 20 divided by we have 4 point mean x component 4.67 times 10 to minus 20 here and if we solve this one our angle will be about 17 degrees so this answer is also close to 20 degrees because this is about 20 degrees so this is our final answer this is how you can approach a beautiful question so the steps are these are the steps for any closed system momentum before has to be equal to momentum after this is a vector means direction and magnitude before and after has to be the same then we can break down this one into two components along x and along y so along x it has to be the same and along y momentum also has to be the same in magnitude and also in direction then we can resolve into components and we can figure out what we need to calculate so this is the main method i hope this makes sense to you if this makes sense to you please like and subscribe because your encouragement is very important part b says deduce whether the client was elastic and mass of alpha particle is given to us so first of all we need to understand the condition for elastic clean elastic clean so the condition for elastic clean for elastic clean kinetic energy before mean kinetic energy of the system before clean has to be equal to kinetic energy of the system after clean so kinetic energy before means that we have only alpha particle so the momentum of alpha particle so we can say momentum of alpha particle square divided by two times mass of alpha particle before clean has to be equal to momentum of alpha particle square after clean 
divided by 2m 2 times mass of alpha particle plus it has to be equal to momentum of proton square divided by 2 times mass of proton this is mass of alpha this is mass of proton now we have masses of alpha particle and also proton and also we have the momentum so simply we need to plug in values if these two equations are equal it means it is elastic if they are not equal it means this is inelastic so that's the main point we need to do we have momentum of alpha particle before clean that was equal to 1.26 times 10 to minus 19 so we have to square this value divided by 2 times mass of alpha particle that is 6.64 times 10 to minus 27 and momentum of alpha particle after clean we have that was equal to 8.06 times 10 to minus 20 we have to take square of this one divided by 2 times mass of alpha particle means 6.64 times 10 to minus 27 plus momentum of proton momentum of proton we have just calculated that was equal to 4.88 times 10 to minus 20 newton second square divided by 2 times mass of alpha particle mass of alpha particle is 1.67 times 10 to minus 27 now if we solve this one we will get here 1.2 times 10 to minus 12 joules this is 10 to minus 12 joules so this is minus 12 and here we will also get 1.2 times 10 to minus 12 joules as these two sides are equal it means kinetic energy before is equal to kinetic energy after so it is elastic clean so simply we can say this is elastic clean so this is how you need to answer i hope it makes sense to you this is very important one you need to understand kinetic energy is equal to p square divided by 2 times m p is the momentum and m is the mass of that particle so this is momentum and this is the mass so this is mass so this is very important equation for some multiple choice questions and also for long question you need this one so you need to understand relationship between momentum and kinetic energy question 15 says the photograph shows a toy car inside a plastic ball the car has an electric motor and follows a circular path in a vertical plane the car travels at a constant speed a student determined how the resultant vertical force on the car varied over a period of time the graph shows the student's data a positive value represents an upward force far part a1 show that the angular velocity of the car's motion about the center of the ball is about 40 radians per second we need to calculate angular velocity means we need to calculate omega and omega is equal to 2 pi over t so if we have value of t we can calculate angular velocity value of t we can read from here so this is one complete cycle so this is 0 0.15 so one small square so this is 0.16 so time period is 0.16 six you need to be careful with units so this is in seconds if we solve this one we will get 39.3 radians per second this question has three marks and the one mark if you have written t is equal to this one you will get one mark and if you have used this formula you will get another mark and if you have got the right answer you will get another mark very straightforward question and this question has theory marks second part says the student took measurements of the ball and wrote down a value of 86 millimeters deduce whether 86 millimeter was the radius or diameter of the ball mass of car is equal to 9.5 gram in order to answer this question first thing we need to understand this force is vertical vertical net force we can say vertical f net 
vertical F net and vertical F net at this point so this is down so this is vertical F net and here vertical F net is up and this is the maximum value vertical net force will be maximum at this point and also maximum at this point and this value is negative because this is pointing down then this value is positive but they have the same magnitude as these two they have the same magnitude so we can take point at this point or we can take point here so this is actually is the bottom so this is at the bottom f net then this is at the top f net and this f net is equal to the centripetal force at the top or at the bottom so this f net is the centripetal force so we can simply say fc this is equal to m r omega square so we can just read from here so this is about 0.63 newtons and mass is 9.5 grams so we can convert this one into kilograms if you want to write on units you can also write on the units here and r we can calculate omega we have calculated that was 39.3 radians per second square now if we solve we will get r is equal to 0.044 meters or we can say this is 4.4 times 10 to minus 2 and we can multiply this one with 10 to 1 and also we can multiply with 10 to minus 1 now we can say this is 44 times 10 to minus 3 meters it means this is equal to 44 millimeters so diameter we can say this will be equal to 2 times r so this will be about 80 8 millimeters so it means this is representing diameter so we can say diameter so hence it is diameter so this is how you can answer this question so diameter is given to us part b says the magnitude of the force exerted by the ball on the car was greatest at 0.04 seconds and least at 0.12 seconds discuss the position of the car at these two times you should consider the forces acting on the car you don't need to do any further calculations so question is talking about force exerted by the ball on the car means question is simply talking about normal reaction force means normal contact force and this is telling us it is maximum at this point means it is maximum at the bottom we have already discussed so this is the normal contact force so this is maximum at this point and this is minimum at the top means at this point we have discussed so this is minimum minimum but vertical resultant force is the same vertical resultant force so we can say vertical f net we have discussed little bit about this one already this is vertical f net at the top and the bottom let me write down at top and bottom very important one you need to understand this one i have seen some videos as well on this question even some teachers online they are explaining this one in a wrong way they're not exactly explaining why this is maximum at this point why it is minimum at this point they're just saying direction is down and up so one is positive negative that is not right physics so vertical f net at top and bottom is equal to centripetal force so this is the point you need to understand and this graph is not representing fc centripetal force centripetal force is only at this point and at this point you can find from this graph because this graph is for vertical f net and vertical f net is maximum at this point and also maximum at this point and at this point it is equal to zero means if you say this is centipede force it means centipede force is zero so it means car cannot go in circle so this is not centipede force this graph is for vertical f net now let me explain you a little bit why vertical 
f net at this point is equal to zero because when the car is at this point there is only horizontal force and this is the resultant force on the car that is acting in this direction means the resultant force at this point on the car is only horizontal so vertical net force is equal to zero and it is also true when the car is here only resultant force on the car is horizontal there is no resultant vertical force so that's reason at this point it is also equal to zero and so these are the points you need to understand now we need to understand the forces at this point and forces at this point so first of all i will talk about at top so we can write down at top so how many forces are acting on the car i hope you will say one force on the car is the weight of the car so we can say this is w of the car and also there is a normal force on the car there is a pushing force by the ball on the car so we can say there is a pushing force that is n and in this case centripetal force is equal to w plus n w plus n and this n will be minimum now if we talk about at bottom now we can write on forces acting on the car forces acting on the car so at the bottom there is a normal contact force so this is normal contact force mean the ball is pushing car in upward direction and there is a weight of the ball that is acting down so this is w so in this case centripetal force this is equal to n minus w so it means this n will be minimum so this value of n will be minimum because centripetal force is the same and this n will be maximum so these are the points you need to include in your answer i hope this makes sense to you this graph makes sense to you and also you understand the main concepts now let me show you the answer how you can write down your answer for this question for the answer of this question we can write down these points this question has six marks and your answer has to be in a logical order and you can write down these six points first you can say magnitude of centripetal force is constant yes magnitude of centripetal force is constant that is in this graph is not for the centripetal force why magnitude of centripetal force is constant because this is equal to m v square divided by r r is constant m is constant speed is constant it is given in the question that speed is constant so it means centripetal force is also constant so this graph is not for centripetal force because centripetal force is constant and this is for vertical f net so this is one point you can say centripetal force on car at bottom is here we have discussed centripetal force is equal to n minus w when the car is at the bottom force by the ball on the car is maximum centripetal force on car at top is normal contact force plus weight we have discussed this point and when the car is at the top force on car is minimum at 0.04 second car is at the bottom and at 0.12 second car is at the top because force on the car at this point is maximum force on the car at this point is minimum i hope this question makes sense to you and i hope this graph is clear to you this question is clear to you so if this was helpful please like and subscribe and if you need more help and you're looking for extra resources you're looking for worksheets you're looking for notes chapter wise notes please join patreon and link for patreon is in the description of this video and also if you have any questions leave your questions in comment i will try to answer as soon as possible if these videos are helpful please also share with your friends with your classmates they can also get help from these videos and they can also improve their understanding of physics Welcome to A level and AP Physics. In today's lesson we will discuss past paper questions from May June 2020 theory paper 4. As always we do we will discuss these questions in detail so you can improve your conceptual understanding of physics and also you can have better understanding of these exam questions. 
and today's lesson we will start from question number 16 and we will try to cover question number 16 17 and 18 let's study together let's improve together question 16 says a such coil is used to investigate magnetic fields the such coil consists of a coil of thin copper wire connected to two output terminals as shown in the figure a student placed the coil in a magnetic field with the axis parallel to direction of the field as shown in the figure the coil was rotated through 90 degrees so the axis was perpendicular to direction of the field as shown in the figure as the coil was rotated a potential difference was detected across the terminals mean across these two terminals for part a explained why a pd was produced as the coil was rotated so first of all we need to understand we have coil like this and then we rotate the coil by 90 degrees and the coil is inside the magnetic field and coil is a conductor so this is very basic concept about electromagnetic induction when we have a conductor and we place inside an external magnetic field and rotate the conductor there is change in magnetic flux in the conductor or simply we can say conductor cuts the magnetic field lines so they will be induced emf so in this case emf will induce so simply we can say so this is very basic concept you have to be very clear about this one induced emf if there is change in flux according to faraday's law or cut the magnetic field lines cut the magnetic field lines so we can say cut the magnetic field lines now you need to understand the beauty of this process so in this case if you just place the coil there will be no induced emf because there is no mechanical energy so in this case simply what we do is we give mechanical energy and with this process we simply convert into electrical energy so it's just conservation of energy we give mechanical energy and we take out electrical energy so we convert energy from one form into another form if there is no mechanical energy it means there will be no electrical energy there is no free lunch and there is no free energy in the universe so simply we can say emf is induced because magnetic field lines are cut or we can say emf is induced because magnetic flux through the coil is changing and this question has two marks so if you write on this you will get two marks so this is how you can write down your answer in a very simple way if you write down emf is induced you will get one mark but this is must you have to write on this one the reason state and explain so this is you need to state emf is induced then you need to explain because wires cut magnetic field lines basic concept about em induction if these things make sense to you or if these videos are helpful please like and subscribe because your encouragement is very important so i will spare more time to make better videos for you part b says show that the initial value of magnetic flux in the coil is about 9 times 10 to minus 5 webers diameter of coil is given to us and magnetic flux density is given so simply we need to calculate magnetic flux how we calculate magnetic flux magnetic flux simply is the product of b times a cosine of theta and theta is the angle between area normal vector and magnetic flux density so in this case if we draw area normal vector so this is direction of area normal vector and this is also direction of magnetic flux density so it means angle is equal to zero as angle is zero so simply we can say this is b a because cosine of zero is one so this will be one so this is equal to b a now simply we need to plug in values value of b is given to us this is in teslas 0.18 teslas diameter is given so we can calculate cross-sectional area pi by 4 d square so we have d this is 25 millimeters so we have to multiply with 10 to minus 3 and square of this one now if we simply solve we will get 8.84 times 10 to minus 5 weapons so this is value of magnetic flux quite straightforward one 
Part C says the graph shows the magnetic flux in the coil while the coil was being rotated. Determine the maximum PD produced across the terminals. Number of turns on coil are given to us equal to 5000. We need to calculate V max means EMF maximum and that will be equal to N times D phi by DT. So this is. So V max as V has maximum value when D phi by DT has maximum value because this is a constant. Now if you look at the graph, we have flux on Y axis and we have time on X axis. So the gradient will be equal to rate of change of flux. So in this case D phi by DT, this is equal to gradient. So simply we can write down gradient here, then the gradient is maximum. And if you look at this graph, you can see the gradient is increasing. So at this point, at this point, approximately gradient is maximum for simplicity, we will be taking this point. So gradient is maximum. So this is how you can draw the line. Now you need to find the gradient of this line. So this point, we have coordinates 0.10 and this is 10. And here we have 0.30 and here we have zero. So it simply means that difference delta y by delta x. So delta y by delta x are first of all we can also plug in value of number of turns. We have 5000. So we have delta y. This is 0 to 10. So we have 10.00 times 10 to minus 5. And this is divided by delta x means delta t. So 0 0.30 minus 0 0.10. Now if we solve this one, we will get our final value. And final answer in this case will be about 2.5 volts. So this is how you can figure out. If your basic concept is clear, simply you need to understand maximum EMF induced is equal to n times d5 by dt. And we can find the answer. Part D says the output terminals of the coil are connected together while the coil is in the magnetic field. The diagram shows a cross section through one turn of the coil. X is on one side of the coil. The coil is rotated clockwise in the magnetic field, causing a current in the coil. The student states that the current at X is into the page. Deduce whether the student's statement is correct you should refer to Lenz's law. So refer to Lenz's law, it means we have to mention Lenz's law in our answer. And also this is a kind of hint. Now, first of all, imagine that we have two terminals of this coil. So you can just imagine these are two terminals of the coil. And when we connect these two terminals, there will be current in the coil. Just for simplicity, I'm saying this is direction of the current. So current will flow in this coil. When current will flow, in this coil and this coil is in an external magnetic field it means there will be force on this coil this is basic principle motor effect we understand so let me little bit explain you about motor effect when a current carrying conductor is placed inside a magnetic field so imagine that imagine that we have magnetic field to the right so this is magnetic field and inside this magnetic field we place a wire and current in the wire is into the page so we can find out direction of force on the wire so left hand so in this case we have current that is into the page so this finger represent current so current is into the page and magnetic field in this case is to the right so this is magnetic field and current is into the page so this will experience force in downward direction so this is the force. So when we have a conductor and there is a current in the conductor and we place conductor in the magnetic field. Angle is also very important. Angle should not be zero degrees. If angle is zero or 180 degrees because this F is equal to B I L sine of theta. So theta should not be zero and theta also should not be 180. Then this wire will experience a force and direction of force we can find using Fleming left hand row. Now for this question hint is given to us Lenz's law. Lenz's law. So in this case we are rotating this one clockwise. So if I look at just at this point it means we are moving this one this way. 
just at very short interval of time we are moving the coil this way we can say this is direction of motion of the coil so by Lenz's law current will flow in this coil in such a way that it will oppose the cause cause is the motion so it will oppose the motion it means this wire will experience an opposing force to the left so this is direction of opposing force means the same force here we have force on the wire so in this case this is direction of force on the wire to the left now again you can use your left hand so this is f this is b this is i so we have direction of force we have direction of external magnetic field so we can find out direction of current so simply we have force that is first of all magnetic field magnetic field is down and force is to the left so let me write on here so you can you have b that is down and the force is to the left so current in this case current so this is current this will be into the page into the page so you can use your left hand so this is left hand so first of all magnetic field is down force is to force is force is to the left so you can see this finger is pointing into the page so student is right that's all what you need to say first thing you need to talk about what we have done in this case by Lenz's law we have discussed that when current will flow current will flow in such a way that it will oppose the cause producing the induced current so how it can oppose it will experience force in the opposite direction so this is how you can find out the second thing we can use Fleming left hand rule and we can find direction of magnetic field uh, we can find direction of induced current and that is into the page so student is correct so this is how you can answer so let me show you the answer how you can write on your answer this question has four marks so these things you can mention these points you can mention in your answer you can say by Lenz's law direction of induced current is such as to oppose the cause of current cause is motion so it has to oppose mean it will experience force in the opposite direction wire experience force due to interaction of induced current and external magnetic field as clock as clock is rotating clockwise this is wire so as wire is rotating as wire is rotating clockwise so opposing force on top is to the left so by Fleming left hand rule current is into the page so student is correct so this is how you can answer a tricky question if one time it is not clear to you watch video again and if you have any questions leave your questions in comments i will explain you as soon as possible question 17 says a potential difference of 5000 volts is applied across two vertical metal plates a sphere with a conducting surface is suspended by an insulating thread and touches the positively charged plate as shown in the figure the sphere becomes positively charged far part a complete the diagram to show the electric field around a positively charged sphere electric field around a positively charged sphere and this question has three marks this question is quite straightforward one so we have sphere that is positively charged so we can draw some positive charges here so this is conducting sphere so the charges will just stay at the surface now we need to draw the electric field lines as it is positive so the electric field lines will be pointing away from this sphere so we can draw these lines pointing away from the sphere pointing away from the sphere pointing away from the sphere so if you have drawn these four lines you will get the marks you will get the marks but if you want to draw some extra you can also draw here so charge will be uniformly distributed so when you draw the lines you have to be careful with that as well so uniformly distributed so we can draw lines here so if we want to extend a little bit we can extend so we can draw a line here another line we can draw here so this is also telling us that charge is uniformly distributed so the length of lines you can also draw the equal so this is a proper way to draw 
electric field around a positively charged sphere the lines they have to start from the surface and lines should be perpendicular to the surface so these are few points you need to understand so if you have drawn this one you will get theory marks part b1 says show that the charge on the sphere is about 10 nanocoulombs potential at surface of sphere is given to us and radius of the sphere is given now how we can calculate potential at the surface of sphere so v sphere at the surface of the sphere so we need to understand this is simply equal to kq over r and for this question we have to calculate value of q so simply we can say this is equal to v time mean v at the surface of the sphere times the radius of the sphere divided by k and value of v is given that is equal to 5000 volts then value of r we have that is in millimeters so we can convert we need to convert this one into meters and we need to divide by value of k k is a constant and its value is 8.99 times 10 to 9 newton meter square per coulomb square now if we solve this one we will get 1.1 times 10 to minus 8 coulombs then this is about 10 nanocoulombs so this is about 10 nanocoulomb we will get 11 nanocoulomb so this is very close to this answer second part says the sphere moves away from the positive plate and comes to rest at an angle theta to the vertical show that the horizontal force on the sphere is about this one distance between plates is given that is equal to 10.5 centimeters the best way to answer this question is we need to understand force is acting on the sphere as sphere is in equilibrium at this point so we have one force that is the tension in the string so we can say this is t this is tension in the string and there is a weight of the sphere that will be acting vertically down we can say this is mg and there will be component of tension that will be acting this way component of tension that is acting this way and this component if we take this t this is angle so this component will be t sine of theta we are taking this angle so there is another force here and this force question is simply is asking to find out and this is the electric force electric force electric force quickly we can calculate so this is horizontal force and this force is equal to this now how we can calculate electric force electric force fe this is equal to e times q so you need to understand you don't need to write down all the forces i'm explaining this one for your better understanding because next time they can ask you what is value of t what is value of tension so you can calculate so that's the reason i'm explaining this is a uniform electric field so uniform electric field means this is delta v divided by t uniform field also means that value of e at any point is constant if e is constant at any point it means force is also constant so simply we can use delta v by t delta v is the difference potential difference between any two points and d is the distance between those two points means separation between those two points students often get confused with this one delta v is potential difference between any two points in this field and d is the separation between those two same points if this is clear now simply we can plug in values and we can find the answer delta v in this case we have 5000 so we are taking two points we are taking one point on this plate one point on this plate so pd is equal to this one and the separation is given that is equal to 10.5 centimeters so 10 to minus 2 multiplied by the charge on the sphere and charge on the sphere we have just calculated in the last part that was equal to 1.1 times 10 to minus 8 coulombs means 11 nano coulombs and now if we solve we will get the force 5.24 times 10 to minus 4 newtons so this is how you can answer third part says show that theta is about one degrees and mass of sphere is given to us we have already discussed the force acting on this sphere to the right is 5.24 times 10 to minus 4 newtons and this force is equal to the horizontal component of tension 
that is d sine of theta mean d sine theta is also equal to 5.24 times 10 to minus 4 newtons because there is no net horizontal force along horizontal and weight of the sphere is acting down so this is the weight so w w is equal to mg and we can calculate value of mg because we have the value of mass so this is 2.7 times 10 to minus 3 multiplied by 9.81 so if we simplify this one we will get 0.0265 newtons weight is equal to the vertical component of tension mean equal to vertical component of tension and this arrow we can draw here we can draw here so let me draw longer arrow for your better understanding so if i draw arrow here so now you can see this is t cosine of theta and t cosine of theta is equal to mg we need to find out this angle we have this component we have also this component so we can simply say tangent of theta in this case has to be equal to t sine of theta divided by t cosine of theta d sine of theta we have that is equal to 5.24 times 10 to minus 4 newtons and t cosine theta is this this is 0 0.0265 so from here we can find out value of theta so theta will be equal to tangent inverse of 5.24 times 10 to minus 4 divided by 0 0.0265 six five and if we solve this one we will get 1.13 degrees about this so this is answer and this value is close to one degrees part c says a second identical charge sphere is held in a fixed position the first sphere attached to the insulating thread is placed near to the fixed sphere the spheres exert a repulsive force on each other the force between the spheres is given to us calculate the distance between the centers of the spheres charge on each sphere is equal to this this question is simply based on coulomb's law so how we can calculate so in this case f is given to us and f is equal to k times q1 q2 over r square for this question we need to calculate the distance means we need to calculate r is the distance so this is we need to calculate so we can say r square this will be equal to k times q1 q2 over f so this is r square so we need to calculate r r is the distance between the centers mean this distance we can use letter d for this one so i'm just using r so this is we need to calculate so this will be k q1 q2 divided by f and we need to take the root of this one one by two now simply we need to plug in values we have value of k that is 8.99 this is a constant times 10 to minus 9 newton meter square per coulomb square and q is given 1.2 this is nano coulomb so we can write down 1.2 times 10 to minus 8 otherwise you can write down 12 times 10 to minus 9 we have two spheres so this is 1.2 times 10 to minus 8 divided by the force and value of force is given to us here that is 5.0 times 10 to minus 4 and we need to take the square root of this and if we solve this one we will get r in this case will be equal to 0.051 meters so this is how we can answer so you need to understand r is not radius of the sphere r is the distance between centers of these two spheres and this question is simply based on coulomb's law and this question has three marks question 18 says a student planned to use a capacitor in a timing circuit the capacitor was connected in series with a resistor to determine the capacitance of the capacitor the capacitor was charged while measuring the current i in the circuit the following graph was plotted for part a the value marked on the capacitor is 22 microfarads show that this value is correct and resistance of resistor is given to us so first of all we can simply sketch this one dc circuit rc circuit so we have resistor and we have a capacitor so they are connected in series so this is the circuit 
and resistance of this resistor is given that is equal to 240 kilo ohms 240 kilo ohms so for this one we need to understand how current will change with time so capacitor is charging so current will be decreasing so this will be i is equal to i naught e to the power of minus t over r c we can take ln on both sides so we can say ln i this will be equal to ln i naught minus t over r c now if we compare this one with straight line equation we can rewrite this one we can say ln i this is equal to minus t over r c plus we have this is ln i naught now we can compare this one with straight line equation y is equal to mx plus c so from here you can see this is a y intercept and m means the gradient this will be equal to minus 1 over r c so if we have value of gradient we can find out value of c in order to find value of gradient we need to draw the line so this is how you can draw the line so you need to draw the best fit line and then we need to determine the gradient of this line so in this case we have coordinates of this point here and we have also coordinates of this point so this is how you need to draw the best fit line means points has to be equally distributed same number of points above and also the same distance so this is the best fit line this is quite straightforward one you can see all the points almost on this line so we can find out the gradient so we have this point here so we have minus 11.00 minus we have point here this is minus so this will be plus 9.25 divided by we have here value of x that is 9.2 minus we have 0 0.00 0, and this is equal to minus 1 over rc and if we solve this side we will get about minus 0 0.190 and this is equal to minus 1 over rc so this minus with minus we can simply cancel so we need to find out value of c value of c so if we cross multiply cross multiply we will get 0 0.190 times rc this is equal to 1 so we need to find out value of c so this will be equal to 1 divided by 0 0.190 times the value of r value of r we have here and this is 240 times 10 to 3 and if we solve this one we will get our final answer and that will be equal to 2.17 times 10 to minus 5 farad and if we convert this one into microfarad we can write down 2.17 multiply with 10 to 1 and multiply with 10 to minus 1 multiply with 10 to minus 5 and if we simplify we will get so this we multiply we will get 21.7 and this is micro so 21.7 microfarad and this answer is very close to 22 so it means this value is correct so this is how we can figure out very nice question on capacitor so this formula is very important this one for discharging and also for charging of a capacitor current formula is the same because current decays when capacitor is charging our capacitor is discharging and this form is very important you need to understand how to write down this formula in linear form part b says the capacitor was used in a circuit to time a client between two identical metal spheres the spheres were suspended from wires the wires were connected to the circuit as shown in the figure when the wires hang vertically the spheres are in contact and the discharging circuit is complete switch x was closed to charge the capacitor the switch was then opened and sphere a was released sphere a collided with sphere b while the spheres are in contact the capacitor partially discharged sphere b moved to the right the maximum height edge of the sphere above the starting position was measured calculate the maximum speed of the sphere b after the collision height is given to us mass of the sphere b is 
given to us so simply at this point we have to find out what is the v max of b after this rises to certain height so here is the height so we can simply draw these lines here so this height is given to us this h is given that is equal to 1.1 centimeters we need to find out v max so this is just based on conservation of mechanical energy we are ignoring air resistance so simply we can say in this case change in gpe this will be equal to change in kinetic energy so we can say the change in kinetic energy this is equal to change in gpe so here we have gp so the change in kinetic energy is one half m v square because final speed at this point is equal to zero at the maximum height so we can say simply this is one half m v max so this is the initial speed then here we have mg delta h so in this case simply mass will be cancelled so we can cancel this mass we need to find out v max so we can say v max this will be equal to 2 g times delta h root of this so we have 2 and value of g is 9.81 and we have in this case value of delta h that is 1.1 centimeters so 1.1 times 10 to minus 2 and if we solve this one we will get v is equal to 0 0.464 meters per second so this is how you can answer so this question just based on conservation of mechanical energy and this is our final answer so this is the value of v max for b second part says calculate the time for which the spheres were in contact and this time is also equal to the discharging time of capacitor so very important point you need to understand what this time exactly is the time the spheres are in contact that time is also the discharging time for the capacitor and for this question resistance in the circuit is given to us potential difference across capacitor before clean is given and potential difference across capacitor after clean is given and capacitance of capacitor is also given to us so simply this is a discharging circuit so we have value of pt so we can write down v as a function of time this will be equal to v naught e to the power of minus t over rc and this is our discharging time now if we take ln on both sides we can say ln of v this will be equal to ln of v naught minus t over rc now we can further rearrange we can write on ln we can write on this is v over v naught this will be equal to minus t over rc just simply ln so minus it means it has to be divided we need to find out value of t so we have all the values we have value of v so this is our value of v this is value of v naught so this is v naught this one is v and value of c we have so this is value of c and value of r is also given to us now simply we need to plug in value so we can say ln we have v that is 5.43 divided by 6.18 then minus t over rc value of r we have that is 49 and value of c we have that is 22 microfarad means 22 times 10 to minus 6 now if we solve this one this side if we solve we will get negative value so this negative negative will be cancelled and we will get value of t that will be equal to 1.39 times 10 to minus 4 seconds so this is the discharging time and this is also the time these two spheres they are in contact so simply you have to use this equation for discharging capacitor. Third part says the student stated that the average force acting on sphere B cannot be more than the weight of sphere A. Deduce whether this statement is correct. Mass of E sphere is given to us. So first of all we can calculate the weight of sphere A. We can say weight of sphere A this will be equal to the mass of sphere times g so we have mass that is equal to 28 grams 
multiply by g that is 9.81 and if we solve this one we will get 0.275 newtons now we have to compare this value with the average force acting on sphere b so how we can calculate average force on sphere b or in the exam they ask you to calculate average force on sphere a forces are the same because the force a apply on b the same force b will apply on a by newton's third law but forces will be in opposite directions so now we need to calculate the average force so how we can calculate average force in contact that will be simply equal to the change in momentum over time in contact so we can say this is m times delta v over delta t mass of b we have that is 28 grams because a and b they have the same mass multiply by delta v because we have already discussed v max here this is the initial speed when this sphere went to this point its final speed was equal to zero final speed was equal to zero and initially it was also at rest at this point then a come hit this b so its velocity change so its velocity changes from zero to v maximum so this is the change in velocity and change in velocity we have already calculated in the last part that was equal to 0.464 and the time taken in the last part we have calculated time in contact that was 1.39 times 10 to minus 4 seconds now if we solve this one we will get about 93 newtons about 93 newtons 92.7 something so about 93 newtons so this is the average force so in this case we can see average force is much much greater than the weight it means statement is incorrect so simply we can say suggestion is incorrect by comparison so simply you need to calculate these two then then you need to compare so we can say this statement is incorrect so this is how you can answer and that's all for this paper i hope this video was helpful and you have improved your understanding of these questions and also you have better understanding of these concepts if this video was helpful please like and subscribe and also if you need extra help and you're looking for more resources you're looking for worksheets you are looking for topic wise notes so please join patreon and the link for patreon is in the description of this video and also if you need past papers you can also find on my website and the link for website is also in the description of this video and if you have any questions please leave your questions in comments and i will try to answer as soon as possible